Could we go to the festival theater? I, again, Susan, from your point of view as a designer, both as a costume designer and as a set designer, how does the festival theater work? I mean, what are its rules, so to speak? It's a classic of its kind. And having seen the uh, Denver Center Theatre Company had a thrust, Opera Theatre of St. Louis had a thrust, Chichester a thrust, all of them, I believe all of them were based on this particular design. It is a classic and it makes me very angry when I hear people saying that it's old fashioned, that it's limiting, that you can't do, trying to turn it into a proscenium theatre where the whole joy of the stage is that the emphasis goes on to the actor. And I'd say if you forget that it's the actor and the audience member that are most important, then okay, you won't like that stage. Because actually, and I will do myself the dirty by saying this, but you actually could get away with a very good actor on that stage. No set, no costumes, no props, just the lighting. Because a good actor will bring the world alive through the words and the way they, they perform on the stage. But it does need highly trained actors who understand that. Now, as someone who understands space and proportion and structure, mm. How does that stage do that? It's the relationship. If you look at Chichester, I always thought, uh, I haven't been there for years, but the distance between one audience member across the stage to the other audience member is almost too wide, visually, psychologically too wide. There is an intimacy about the festival that you none of these other theatres have been able to capture proportion of stage to audience those relationships are very important so even if you're in the back row of the festival you don't feel you're too far away from it either up too high which has happened they've got the angle of the seating too acute or um, that the audience member feels too far away or also if the audience member feels too cramped in, in relationship to the stage. You need a breath between you, the audience member, and the actor. I've always, the few times I've acted on it, I've found that the, the thrust is smaller than I ever imagined. Yes. And is its small size something to do with the resonance in that space? I think so, yes, because you're all, I call it an island, that island is for the actor. All right, not for the designer. Not for the designer. And a stage people. That's not built for the designer. That's no, interesting. and it's interesting because Tanya is one of the greatest designers. The other thing I find quite interesting, since they bought the angle in for the audience, the arc of the audience seating, apparently Tanya always wanted to do that. I don't think she was right. No, I think she was right the first time. Because it was more than 180. It was whatever, mm. 200 or whatever. Which and forced the people on the sides to, to focus on the island as well as the rest of the audience. What's happening now, directors are trying to push it further and further up stage, which means there's a large, a great number of the audience don't get the full picture. Right. And... I think you have to understand that that stage is about acting. It's not about visual effects. It's about acting. Visual, visually, you can enhance what they do on that stage. But if you want to do otherwise, I've, I do feel quite strongly, if you don't like that stage, then don't try and work on it. If you think it's old-fashioned, it's like a piece of antique furniture with a great history built into it that's built up layer upon layer upon layer, you have to grow out of the stage. And Michael McDonough did a wonderful production, very contemporary, quite a few years back. Measure of, for measure? Yes. That I thought worked excellently, it made it feel like a totally different space. You need your imagination on that stage in all areas. 
You really need to use your imagination. You can't just... The audience, you mean? Everybody. Everybody. You can't just do a play on there. You have to really think about it. More about the piece. What is the piece? What is the core of the piece? What is the thing you're trying to bring out? Are you going to do it with your actors or do you want big visual effects to create how you see that play? I think, you know, it's at the moment I'm in two minds about the whole thing because I think, would you take Drottling home? Would you take any classical theatre and change it because it's old fashioned? Oh, you mean driving them in Sweden? Yes. The 18th century? Yes. Replica that's been found. Yes. Right. One of a kind, very special. I think Stratford falls into that category. And that's not being uh, stuck in, um, in my young days or in it, there'd be never anything else that would better it possibly could with that style of theatre but that style of theatre is unique really unique as I say I don't think any other theatre quite comes up to the standard well of they took this the Guthrie down in yes. Minneapolis it's gone but I gather that the new one is similar to the old to the original oh Tell me about um. Tell me about the height above the island, so to speak. There's the you have to proportion. be careful with the height because when you're an audience member, the same applies for the proscenium stage. You don't want to create visual barriers, so it becomes the tricky things on the festival stage: placement of furniture, how you how you get actors on and off, how you get props on and off. Michael always says about Michael Langham, he has a cinematic approach to it. There is always this flow. Robin had that understanding of the stage, that there was a tremendous flow. You never felt there's a blackout, they're changing furniture. You always got a sense of a continual world. And I think one of the things that helped the theatre in... I've got to, be careful not to say in the old days, but I'm sorry it was, that there was a very special working relationship between the designer, the director, and the company of actors putting on the play, which meant that the designer was there continually through the rehearsal period. Rather sorry, than you're talking the, the time of Robin Phillips, Michael Langham? And John Hirsch. And John Hirsch, those three times, right. And the joy, what made Stratford so different was that it was very much company feeling. So if something happened in rehearsal, the designer can be called in, come and look and see what's happening and go away and adjust what they're doing to what is happening on the stage. So there's a cohesion to it, a sense of the piece as a whole, and that they're continually talking to wardrobe, talking to props, I just watched rehearsal and so-and-so is doing this with his costume or I think that chair is too low, it needs, because it's, they're not sitting properly. There was a, a collaboration and a communication between all areas that does not happen when you lose that company feeling and I'm afraid the design part of it is very... Uh, how the design worked was very important in relation what made the theatre so special and what made so many designers want to come and work here. But if you don't understand, it goes back to the rules. If you don't understand the stage, you don't understand how it works. You had people there that had grown up with the theatre, either in other places before they came in here, so that they really understood how theatre worked. But more importantly, what made this theatre so special and so apart from other people, and it, it was the working process, so that you all work together to explore, which is a very important part of the art form, whether you be an actor or a designer or a costume painter or a prop maker, you need time to explore, to create something special, something different that you wouldn't see anywhere else. That is why I'm 
Garth Drabinsky used all the production people that came out of Stratford because they had such a high standard of work, far higher than anywhere else in North America. And again, that's why people wanted to come here to work, because of those high standards. And the good designer fed off the good cutter, and the good designer helped to train the younger cutter, who is part of that sculptural process of creating what the actor needs.